and welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and I'm your host for today. We are so happy that you've tuned in and we want you to interact with us. So how can you interact? Well, however, whatever forum you're watching on, we want you to start typing in questions. And also I wanna mention on that note, gospeltruth.tv. Uh, we want you to start jumping over there. We want all of our live stream material to come to you through gospeltruth.tv. And if you were to jump over there right now, there would be less likelihood of interruption uh, happening. So we want you to interact with us, type in those questions. We're gonna get to as many of those questions that you submit as we possibly can within the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program. In order for you to interact with us live, yes, I need to go over the schedule once again. So Mondays and Fridays, we have live Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. And bright and early Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. And that is all mountain time. So please calculate that out so you can tune in while we're live and interact with us. Also, you guys, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday. They're also staffed on the weekends from 7.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. I think I got that right. <laughs> it's funny, I say it 500 times and I still question myself. On the weekends, that is all mountain time. So you guys, they are there and they want to pray with you. They wanna guide you to, to the word of God or to supplemental teaching for whatever you could possibly be going through. And we live in kind of a little crazy world today. And so if you're going through something, don't hesitate to reach out to them. Go, uh, give them a call at 719-635-1111. Last but not least, this is a viewer supported live Bible study. That means it's brought to you by the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and the gifts that come into the ministry. You can be a part of these uh, live Bible studies as well as all the live content that we have coming to you on a weekly basis, um, simply by giving or being a partner. So I would encourage you to pray about doing that. There's a few ways you can give. You can go to awmi.net slash give, or you can give us a call at that same number of 719-635-1111. And once again, I'm going to mention one more time, gospeltruth.tv. Uh, there's a link down below probably that you can click on. And I would encourage you to jump over there sooner than later <laughs> and start interacting with us. So I am so excited today to introduce our guest uh, speaker today, who is Barry Bennett. He um, was my favorite instructor in Bible school. And um, he was also the dean. So it was kind of that awe. Uh, ah, reverential fear of, of Mr. Bennett that I always had. And he is an amazing man of the word. So you guys are going to be abundantly blessed. His official title now for the ministry is um, Senior Instructor. So that's pretty powerful. And we are excited to hear what you have to share with us today. Well, thank you, Julianne. Yes. Good to be here again. Yes. And uh, looking forward to sharing with you all. And uh, I hope this word will bless you. I want to share a word today. Uh, and I was telling Julianne before we started that I'm, I'm sharing things that I want to hear. Amen. So <laughs> hopefully you'll enjoy it too. But uh, I want to talk about the, the true source of faith. Uh, it's good to go back and review certain subjects many times really. And faith is a subject that I am going back into right now in my own personal life and just digging in and getting more and more blessed. Uh, I want to know as much as I can possibly know about uh, having faith in God. And so I want to start there in Mark 11, 22, well-known verse. I'm not going to read 23. Uh, <laughs> what? I just want to stop in, in 11, 22. And Jesus is speaking, and he's just gone through the issue of cursing a fig tree, and the disciples are questioning how that happened. And, uh, and so Mark 11, 22, Jesus says to them, have faith in God. Mm. And just right there, is uh, quite a bit to, to meditate on, to think about, to consider, to ponder, have faith in God. And so when we think about this, we're thinking about having faith in God, the person of God, and everything that involves, everything that means. What does it mean to have faith in God? He didn't say have faith in, and so many of us today, uh, maybe without even thinking, we have faith in a certain political figure, or we have faith in a certain political system, or we have faith in a certain economic system, or we have faith in uh, what science is discovering, or we have faith in something, faith in culture, faith in whatever. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people perhaps 
have more faith in certain things and or people than they do in God. Mm. And yet they're Christians. And Jesus is saying, have faith in God. And yet for, for many, God is a mysterious unknown. Uh, we may have a certain idea of what we think God is like, but how can you have faith in someone that you don't know? And how can you have faith in, in someone whose nature is, is perhaps mysterious to you? That people say, well, you know, God moves in mysterious ways. Well, immediately, how can you have faith in that? Yeah. How can you have confidence? How can you have absolute assurance? Or as it says uh, concerning Abraham in Romans 4, that he was fully persuaded. Mm. How can you be fully persuaded if, if you immediately define God as being mysterious? Yeah. And so when Jesus says, have faith in God, I don't believe he, he's pointing us towards something that is mysterious, something that is unknowable. Go with me, if you would, to 2 Timothy 1.12. 2 Timothy 1.12. And Paul, I'll read the whole verse, but I just there's one phrase in here that I want to emphasize. Paul says, for this reason, I also suffer these things. He's suffering persecution. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed oh. and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed uh, to him until that day. But the phrase obviously that I'm, I'm looking at here, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I know him, the one I have believed. I have faith in God. It, he doesn't say, I know what I have believed. I, I know the doctrine I have believed. I know what they taught me in church and I believe that. He's, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, I know whom I have believed. And when Jesus says, have faith in God, he's saying, have faith in a person in whom you can have total confidence, be fully, fully persuaded. And your, your faith is not in a doctrinal system or in five steps to this or eight steps toward that. Your faith is in the person of God himself. Amen. And when Paul says, I know whom I have believed, he's talking about a relationship that goes deeper than just a doctrinal study or just having your mind renewed, which I'm not putting down whatsoever. I teach that too. Mm -hmm. But it's more than just a renewed mind. The renewed mind is a platform in which you can use to get into a deeper knowledge of God himself. And so when we're talking about the, the source of true faith, the source of true faith is God. He is the author and finisher of our faith. But we have to know him and not just about him or not just uh, the doctrinal issues that we find in the New Testament, but do you really know him? And so let's, let's go on now and, and try to develop this some more. To know him, you need to know his nature. You need to know his character. You need to know if you can trust him. People that you know well, and for example, uh, my wife and I have been married for 43 years. I know her. Yeah. Uh, no one can come up to me and, and deceive me about my wife. I know her. She knows me. And so we have had many years of, of knowing each other. I don't think there's anything we don't know about each other. So I know my wife and I want to know God as well as I know my wife yeah. or better. Amen? Amen. And so to know him is to have a revelation of his true nature and his purpose for your life. So let's, let's look at a few verses here. Uh, James 1.17, we'll start there. James 1.17 says, every good gift yeah. and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Praise God. No variation or shadow of turning is referring to the to the immutability of God, to the permanence of God, that he doesn't change, that he's not mysterious. He doesn't do one thing one day and a, and a different thing the next. You can't have faith in that. Have faith in God. God, every good gift comes from God. There's no changeableness in God. He is a constant. He is constantly good. He is constantly love. He is constant. He has permanently revealed himself, we could say, through Jesus. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so it's not really legitimate to say today, well, God is mysterious and who can know him and he, who knows what he's gonna do next. That's, that's not a, a true statement. And as long as we stay in that kind of mysterious world of foggy God, you can't have faith in him. And yet Jesus said, have faith in God. And Paul said, I know whom I have believed not what I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I know the person 
of God. And so God is good. Every good gift comes from God. He's not changing. He's not changing on, and doing a good thing for someone and a bad thing for someone else. That is not God. Amen. Let's go to John 10, 10, very well-known passage. Jesus is speaking in John 10, 10. He says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Amen. And so now Jesus is pitting that which is evil, that which speaks of darkness, of, of loss, of suffering, uh, of even death. He's speaking and pitting that against himself, the revelation of God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he says, I have come that they might have abundant life. There is no changing in me. Every good gift comes from me. And so now when Jesus says, have faith in God, he's pointing us toward truly himself because he is the manifestation of God in the flesh. And that if we are going to walk by faith then we're going to have to walk by faith in something that we know is solid, that we know is secure, that we know doesn't change, Amen. that we know we can have and be fully persuaded in. We know whom we have believed. Uh, I, I, I feel like I know God to the, to the degree that I know God. Yeah. Uh, we can all, there's always more to know. But I have an unswerving confidence in the goodness of God and in his desires for my life, for his plan for my life. Let's do Hebrews 11.6. Mm. Let's go to Hebrews 11.6. Here the author of Hebrews says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So now we have a new ingredient thrown into the mix. Have faith in God is what we read in Mark 11.22. He says, without faith, in God, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is, and here we go with his nature. He is a rewarder mm -hmm. of those who diligently seek him. Every good gift comes from him. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and these things will be added, added to you, the yeah. things of life. And so God is a good God, but without faith, it's impossible to please him, which corresponds with what Jesus said, have faith in God, have faith in someone you can know, his nature you can be sure of, you can be fully persuaded of his goodness. And without faith, it's impossible to please him because he's a rewarder yes. if you diligently seek him. Praise God. And so the, these things begin to build on one another. So we're talking about absolute confidence in God's goodness towards you. Now, some of you will say, uh, he, I don't think he's been very good toward me, but it's not God that has created messes in your life. Uh, it's often we who have created these messes in our lives. And it's God that has offered us his grace and the ability to know him so that we can escape the messes of life. Amen. But many times we don't know him. We have a very fuzzy concept of God. We don't know in whom we have believed. Uh, we might know some doctrines and some of the doctrines may be wrong doctrines. They may be bad teaching. And so we have a very uh, bad, we'll say, knowledge of God. And therefore, how can we walk in true faith? How can we receive from his goodness if we're not even convinced he's good? Yeah. It's, all, it's an impossibility. Yeah. Wow. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures today. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. This is God. This is, he's a rewarder. He is a giver of good things. He doesn't change. He wants us to have abundant life. I understand he, that Jesus promised persecution. I understand that there are hard times. I understand tribulation. I, I get it. But none of those things kept Jesus from making promises. In other words, a promise and persecution are not contradictory. The promise can still live in the environment of persecution. Right. Paul wrote promises from prison. He was still living the abundant life even in prison. And so these things aren't contradictory. The nature of God isn't going to change. The nature of God is goodness towards you. Men may come against you. The enemy may come against you. But that doesn't change the goodness of God towards your life. Mm -hmm. And we can go through the storms of life if we have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in someone you know. I know in whom I have believed. Amen. Amen. All right. So we've kind of set the table here. Where does true faith come from? Where does true faith come from? 
And it says in Romans 10, 17, <clears throat> Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing yes. and hearing, and you could add comes in a sense, it's comparing two things and hearing by the word of God. So faith has a source and the source is hearing, spiritually hearing, not just naturally hearing, but spiritually hearing God speak the word of God. So now we, we open up a whole lot more to consider because we're saying that we have to have faith in God. Jesus said, have faith in God. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Where does this faith come from that pleases him? It comes from hearing him, or we could say it comes from having a, a genuine fellowship, a genuine relationship with God the Father in which we are expecting to hear him and he speaks to us. Yeah. He quickens us by his spirit. He reveals things to us. You know, I was thinking as I was driving up here this morning, I have never had trouble believing anything that God has quickened to my spirit. That's, that's rock solid. Things that I know, but haven't been yet quickened to me, I, I may struggle more to believe them. I know they're true. It's not that I doubt them but to apply them to my life and to have full, be fully persuaded might be a little bit trickier. But when God has quickened something to me, when I have heard him speak to me, and I, when I use that word speak, I'm using it in the sense of a light bulb moment or a, a quickening or a revelation or a knowing, something of that nature. I've never had trouble believing anything that has been made real to me in my spirit, man. Amen. Those things, in other words, it's, it's just, if you will, second nature to believe that which God says. And when, when Jesus says, have faith in God and without faith, it's impossible to please him. He's saying the faith comes from hearing God or in other words, you've got to be in a true relationship with the father in which you expect to hear him. Matthew uh, 4, 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I get from that, that that's an ongoing, continual daily yeah. thing because bread is an ongoing, continual daily thing. We yeah. eat three meals a day or some of you perhaps more. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's in the same way that we eat daily, we should be hearing from God daily. Amen. It should be an expectation. And that's how I live. I, I, I live with an expectation of being quickened, of having verses jump off the page at me, of new understanding coming into my life, of having direction. I've received very specific uh, direction in my life before. Uh, when moving from one city to another, when we were missionaries and the Lord showed me three specific things that would happen in order and they happened just like that. I, I could go through many, 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 many times that the Lord has quickened me about direction or about issues I was facing the most recent issue being life and death. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you will not die from this, you will make it through it. And that was what sustained me through everything that I went through over the past year. I had a word from God. Amen. See, I have no trouble believing when I have something quickened to me, but it's when it's something that I might know mentally, but it's not alive in me yet, there I may struggle to believe. I know it's true, but it's, I'm trying to work up my own faith. And I haven't found that to work, at least in my life. I need to hear from God. And when I know that God is speaking, his word is alive and active. It, it's never, it's not, it's not that he's not speaking. It's just that I'm sometimes dull of hearing. Yes. That's the problem. That's it. So never think, <clears throat> why doesn't God speak to me? No, he is, but we're dull of hearing, oftentimes dull of hearing. So that's why we struggle with this. So the one that gives the faith, the author of our faith, <laughs> activates our faith mm -hmm. by quickening his word to us. But the quickening depends upon us being sensitive to the quickening. I mean, how many times has God tried to probably get through to me and I was busy with other things. And so I'm no doubt have missed uh, words from God that would have been a blessing to my life. Mm -hmm. It says in John 10, 27, <clears throat> John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. Amen and I know them and they follow me. <laughs> Praise God. So we are to know in whom we have believed and he knows us and he says, Our, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And so again, we can, we can develop this to where we have the capacity to hear him yeah. 
and we know we're hearing him if we're following him. Amen. And we're following him with a certainty, with a f being fully persuaded that whatever God is leading us into, it is for our own best interest because he's a giver of good gifts. He wants us to have abundant life. He know, we know the thoughts that he thinks toward us, peace, not evil. And so I can walk in full assurance of following God because I know he has my best interests at heart. I was sharing in chapel the other day here in school. And uh, one of the things the Lord spoke to me a few years ago, about three years ago, was Barry, I'm not done blessing you. Praise God. And he gave me Hebrews 6, 14, which says, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply you. It starts with surely blessing I will bless you. And I know that was spoken to Abraham specifically, but contextually, I'm a child of Abraham amen. by faith. Amen. Yes, praise and God. And so that's for me. And God said, I'm not done blessing you. <laughs> and I went through a whole bunch of stuff where I thought, God. <laughs> <laughs> I could use some of that yeah, blessing I right now. That. <laughs> but now here I am. I'm, I'm back and, and I'm in health and everything is good. And I'm amen. looking forward to years, if not decades, of fruitful service uh, to the Lord being fully persuaded because I know whom I have believed, not just what I have believed, but Amen. whom I have believed. He loves me. He's for me. He wants to bless me. Yes. So Romans 8, 16 was a key verse in my, in my journey to understand faith. Romans 8, 16 says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. So the first part of that verse, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. And then I realized the second part of the verse, you could, you could erase that and put in almost anything that, that aligns itself with his will. Mm -hmm. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that by his stripes we were healed. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And to the degree, this is what I mean by hearing God, to the degree that the spirit bears witness with your spirit or that you are not dull of hearing, but you are expecting these things to, to, to take place in your spirit, man, that is where faith comes from. Praise God. And that's where he says, have faith in God, or in other words, pay attention, listen, be open to hear the Father, because that's where faith comes from. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you can't that's be so shaken good. from that. When the Spirit bears witness with your spirit of something, you can't be shaken. And I could go through a hundred different examples of that in my own life. When I know God has quickened something to me, what cometh by hearing? Faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Amen. And so when I know something's been quickened to me, or I, let me put it this way. I know something has been quickened to me when all of a sudden faith is there. Yeah. And I'm ready to tackle whatever it is that God has put in my life or, uh, or whatever the enemy's put in my life. I, I can tackle that. I can resist the devil. He will flee. Why? Because something has been quickened to me Amen. by the Spirit of God. Praise God. And this is not an exceptional thing in the sense that it's not just for me or for Andrew or for Greg Moore, Dwayne Sheriff. This should be our daily lifestyle that we should be in the word, we should be praying in the spirit, we should be pondering and meditating on the things of God because that creates the environment for something to be quickened to you. And things get quickened to me when I least expect it. In other words, I've created the environment for years and years and years, and yet I'll be driving or mowing the yard or taking a shower or something, and I'll, light, I'll have a light bulb moment and I'll think, wow, now I understand this, or wow, now I know what God is going to do about this. Something will be quickened to me, yeah. and I don't know any other way to live. I mean, my, my sheep hear my voice. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so this should be our daily expectation, and this is where true faith comes from. The source of true faith is hearing God or having something quickened by the Spirit to your spirit, and it comes alive within and then what happens? Out of your mouth hmm. comes that positive declaration or that agreement, or we call it that confession or whatever. See, so many people are confessing things, and I'm not against that, uh, but they're doing it hoping that it will be quickened. Right, right. And that's, I'm not against that. That's, that's one way to hear the word, evidently. Yeah. But when it's been quickened and it comes out of your mouth, it carries the life and the authority of God. Amen. And that's where things begin to change. Yes. When something gets quickened to you, no one has to tell you, say this, say that. No, you know what to say because it has been 
made alive within you. You know that you know that you know. And, and there are so many cases of this. Uh, I probably will do a study here soon on, on when your spirit is agitated within you. Uh, I've, I've had instances where the Spirit of God came and quickened me to say no to negative reports I was getting from doctors or what have you. No. And that was the Spirit of God quickening me because what they were saying was conflicting with what the, what the, 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 the revelation of God within me was. Yeah. And so when, I, when something came against what I knew to be the will of God, no came out of me. And that was the quickening of the Holy Spirit and miracles ensued. So th this is, the, we're talking about what is the source of true faith? We have got to desire a relationship with the Father over everything else. I could put it this way, what, what do you value? What is of the most value to you in your life? And I'm not trying to put anybody down here, I'm hopefully trying to inspire you but you need to value your, your fellowship with the Father over anything else. You need to be expecting to hear Him, expecting to be quickened, expecting to have things revealed to you. <laughs> the questions you have in the Word, the Holy Spirit can show you those things. A lot of people write me with their questions. I wish they would talk to God <laughs> about their questions. <laughs> I don't mind trying to help, but, but the real answer is going to be, it, it will be made real to you when it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Amen. Uh, rather than my email. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's talk a few more minutes about this. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4.13. And it says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. What leaps out at me here, and there's a lot here I don't have time for, but it's called the spirit of faith. Why is it called the spirit of faith? Where does it come from? Well, it comes from God, we know. It comes from hearing his word. Well, Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And I think that's John 6, 63. I don't have that in my notes, but... Uh, my words are spirit and they are life. This is called the spirit of faith. And so when the spirit quickens something to your spirit, it's because the word, which is spirit, is being quickened to you in some way. And it may be a word that you've read many, many years ago, but the spirit quickens it. It draws it back up and makes it alive inside your heart. And then you speak with your mouth and, and the power of God is released into that situation, into that circumstance. So faith can come. Am I going too fast? No, not okay. at all. All right. No, this is good. Okay, I need to breathe. <laughs> Are you, do you think <laughs> going you're going too fast? Too for fast? Me, yeah. <laughs> all right. We can, we can have things quickened while we read, or we can, the Bible, or we can read the Bible and things not be quickened. Yeah. We're, we're reading the same Bible, but some people are reading expecting things to be quickened by the Spirit. We can hear a message. Two people can be listening to the same message in, in Bible school or in church, and one person can be utterly transformed by the Spirit of God, and the other person, well, that was good, or I wasn't really paying attention to what they talk yeah. about. Yeah. And they miss it. They it's completely wild. miss it because so many of us are dull of hearing, and we're not even expecting to hear God many times. Mm. I challenge the students, every speaker you listen to, whether you think you're going to like them or not, Make a vow to yourself, I am going to hear God say something to me from this message. Amen. And that all of a sudden puts you on the edge of your seat taking notes because you're expecting to hear from God. Don't be dull of hearing. Be excited about this is an opportunity for God to speak to me, whether the, the topic, sometimes it's not even the topic that they're talking about and God will speak to me something else. Yeah. And I get messages from other speakers all the time, and it's not even their message. It's something that God spoke to me while they were speaking their message. Amen. So you, Amen. I just expect to have this uh, inter interaction with the Father all the time. You know, Greg Fritz told a story one time. Well, he, I heard him teach this, and he was saying how, you know, you see people go to a baseball game, and they bring, like, their glove because they're expecting to catch a fly ball, yep. right? right? And it's like, 
thousands of people and the odds of them catching a fly ball, but they are so excited and they are expecting. Yeah. And it's like, that's how we need to be in every single service and every single teaching and every single Bible study. God can speak to us just like that, right? Exactly. Yeah. And it's interesting when you watch a ball game, how many people with gloves catch catch foul balls. Yeah, because they came expecting, they came, huh? Yeah. Other, other people are ducking, but they are prepared. <laughs> They're like, oh, don't <laughs> so, worry, I got this. Right. <laughs> Praise okay. God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, it, again, it's not what you believe, though that's important. I'm not trying to put down what you believe, but it's who you believe. Do you know Him? God. Do you believe Him? Do you have fellowship with Him? Are you hearing His voice? Is the Spirit quickening things to you? That's where faith comes from. And so many people think, well, I have faith. Well, you, you have the ingredients for faith, but until things are made alive to you, you're not going to have true faith. True faith is going to be a living thing. You don't have to ask people what they think or what their opinion is. You're going to be moving into a different dimension. You'll know what to say. You'll know what to do because God the Father has spoken to you. Amen. And that to me puts the whole Christian life on a different dimension. Uh, to me, it's exciting. It's it's. I don't know how else to live. I need to hear from God and I expect to hear from God daily. Amen. I probably have more here, but we'll just stop because we're into the question time. Okay, so. well, that is amazing and it's uh, so, so good. So, okay, so let's get to your questions. Please continue to keep submitting your questions and we'll get to as many of those as we can. So um, this is a great question practically from your opinion. Uh, Rockin asks, what are the ways we can diligently seek God? Like what does diligently seek God mean to you practically? Well, diligently to me doesn't mean that I'm working at, at something. It means that I am enjoying a relationship, a fellowship with the Father. And so even when I'm like my wife and I play, play games every night, we have board games and different, uh, different games that we play and we spend time together. But even then, Though I'm involved in the game, I can still be thinking about verses I've read that day or concepts I'm meditating on. I can still be pondering and meditating on the things of God. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm always thinking about something that has to deal with a book I'm reading about the God or the Bible, or things I've read that day. Uh, I'll, I'll rehearse things that I've shared in Bible college and think, okay, this, I, I I, have, I need to get more light on this. I know what I shared, but I, I think I'm missing something. So I'm always turning things over in my mind and in my heart and expecting more light to come, praying in the spirit, praying in, in your native language, praying in English in my case. Uh, these are ways that we just are continually in fellowship with the Father, worshiping, thanksgiving, just uh, loving, loving the Father is, is the only answer I really can give you is that you wanna spend time with him. Yeah, and that constant fellowship, that's great. Um, so Anne says, asks this question, and it's about knowing in whom you've served is how I'm taking it. I know we are, to, we are in a new covenant, but I still struggle reading the Old Testament sometimes. How can I overcome that? Because I think sometimes um, God appears different in the Old Testament. How can we overcome that? Well, we need to understand the revelation of, of God through Jesus. Amen. Once you understand the revelation of God in Jesus, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, then you can go back into the old and you can glean those same characteristics uh, from the promises that were given to Israel. All of the promises of God are yes and amen, 2 Corinthians 1.20. And so what, <clears throat> when I read the Old Testament, I'm not looking for the judgments and I'm not looking for the, the, the confusing things. I'm looking for the promises that, that reveal Jesus as he's revealed himself to us in the new. And so any promise I find that reveals God's heart toward his people, I take that for me because I'm his people, amen? So we can, we can go back and read the Old Testament, but I read it through the filter of Jesus and I read it looking for the nature of God as revealed in the New Testament. And I look for the promises of God that I can apply to my life. Amen. That's really good. So, um, or you can check out Karis Bible College. <laughs> Better still. Yeah. You can go to discovercaris.com and um, you will be, you will have a strong foundation in knowing the old covenant versus the new covenant. Amen. And, and that's powerful. It'll, it'll settle some things in your heart about who, in whom you believe. Amen. Praise God. So Anne has another question. What does dull of hearing mean? 
Dull of hearing means that the, the cares of this world have choked the word in our lives. We are more concerned about our favorite TV shows, mm -hmm. the news, uh, <laughs> bills that we have to pay, all of the cares of life, which I understand are real, but how you approach those, if you let those consume you, if you let those uh, put anxiety in your heart, worry, fear, you're, what you're doing is you're closing down your spiritual sensitivity to the voice of God. And so it's gonna be much, much harder. It's like uh, listening to music. Uh, if I listen to music in my living room where everything else is quiet and I'm, I can hear every, every note, every, every sound, every instrument. But if I take that same recording and go to a major city street on the corner and sit and try to listen to the music, I can't hear it because of all of the noise of the cars, of the people, of all of this. Mm -hmm. So the distractions that tend, let me put it this way, distractions tend to make us dull of hearing. Mm, that's good. Drowns out uh, that still small voice. Right. Praise God. Uh, so Michelle says, when I'm not in faith, is God disappointed in me? Well, <laughs> Not disappointed in the sense he still loves you as his child, but disappointed may, maybe in the sense is that you're not getting all that you could be getting from, yeah. from that relationship. Uh, and so it's the same way as a parent with a child. I will never be disappointed in my children at, for, in the sake of that they are my children and I love them dearly and 100% and, and all of that. But if they never seek me out for advice, if they never come to me, if they never want to hear what I think about anything, well, there's a little disappointment there. I don't know if that's a great example. I have great kids and they do come to me for advice. <laughs> but just trying to help us understand this. But uh, the, rela the relationship with the Father, in John 5, 19, Jesus said, I can only do, if you could put John 5, 19 up for me. My verse person may be gone. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll paraphrase. Well, thank there you. There it is. Okay. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. What Jesus is saying here is that he was limited to the same relationship I'm talking about. He couldn't just make stuff up as he went. He had to see or hear from the Father, what the Father was going to do, we'll say the next day, Jesus went off to pray. Yeah. And I think he's getting his revelation for the next day of I'm, tomorrow we're gonna feed thousands, tomorrow I'm gonna heal multitudes. And he's getting this from the Father, but he can't go beyond what he gets from the Father. Yeah. In other words, he can only minister to the, to the limits of what he's getting from his Father. I forgot the question. <laughs> the question was, <laughs> um, when I'm not in faith, is God disappointed in me? Well, when we're not in fellowship, we're, limi we're limiting ourselves Amen. to what, what is possible. The possibilities from fellowship are limitless. The possibilities when we're dull of hearing and out of fellowship with the Father, uh, we, we're living by our flesh and it's going to be a very limited life. Right, right. I, I just had a picture of, you know, like a parent giving a child this wonderful, amazing toy that you can do 1500 different things with it. And the child opens it and just plays with the box. And the parents going, <laughs> but the toy is so amazing. The toy would bring you so much more joy and so much more fulfillment, but you're just settling with the box. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Isn't that good? good? It just gave yeah. to me. Thank yeah. you, Lord. <laughs> so don't just play with the box. <laughs> Enjoy the whole pro the Amen. whole thing and Amen. be in faith. That's how you can do that. Uh, Bug says, when we suffer from a chronic illness, I know we <clears throat> command the symptoms and disease to go away in Jesus' name. But how do we ask for patience when we don't see that instantaneous result? I have faith, but feel like I am not praying the right way for the disease and symptoms to cease. Okay, there's multi layers to that question. I know. Uh, first of all, you don't ask for patience. You have patience. It came with the package. Amen. When you got born again, one of the fruit of the Spirit is patience and long suffering and self control. So those are all part of what's in you already. So you, you already have all of that. Uh, but Hebrews six twelve says, "By faith and patience." And if I recall right. Patience means cheerful endurance. Yeah. I'm not sure I like that definition. <laughs> it's the cheerful part. But cheerful endurance is patience. By faith and cheerful endurance, we inherit the promises. Amen. And so not everything is instantaneous in the kingdom of God. I know that's what we would like. That's what I would like. 
uh, but sometimes there is a battle to be fought. When the children of Israel were told to go into the promised land and they sent in the spies and 10 came back with a bad report, God had already told them it was their land. And when they eventually did 40 years later go in and take the land, the giants were still there, the fortified cities were still there. They still had to drive out the inhabitants of the land. In other words, just because something has been promised doesn't mean there will not be a battle. Mm. Things have been promised, healing is promised, but sometimes there is a battle that we have to fight. Amen. Along the way, I just have come through a battle. I knew the victory, I knew the end from the beginning, but I had to go through the battle uh, because of that, uh, or in spite of that. Amen. My iPad is dinging. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, no. I apologize. Anyway. It is coming through the battle, and it's that patience of through the battle. So I want to encourage you, Bug. I don't think you are praying incorrectly. You are just in a battle. And once again, I'm gonna. This scripture has been ministering to me so much. In Luke 21:19, Jesus said, "In your patience, possess ye your soul." So don't get underneath the circumstances because I believe you are praying correctly to your symptoms Amen. and that disease. And you, you stand in that battle. You don't back down and be like, am I praying wrong? No, you know in whom you, in whom you believe. Praise Amen. God. That's good. Ah. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So uh, I was going to ask this question from uh, Bob. This is a great question and I would like your view on it, Barry. Um, what is the best way to test a word that comes from another person, like a prophetic word? How do we know if it's from God? Well, what comes by hearing God? Faith. Faith. And so if you get a word from someone and it doesn't provoke faith, activate faith, stimulate faith in you, if it creates more questions than it does faith, then I just put it on the shelf. Yeah. I've gotten words before uh, that were well-intentioned and it was what someone thought they saw in my life or in my future and they have been absolutely wrong. Uh, but I don't get offended at that. I just, they didn't spark faith in me at the time. They didn't create a vision from God. They didn't confirm anything that God was speaking to me. And that's a, another good way is that, is this confirming something that God has already spoken to you? Yeah. Or is it just out of the blue? And sometimes things are just out of the blue. And so if they are and they don't provoke faith in me, then I'll just set them aside and see if they ever do, uh, if God ever does confirm that to me. But I need to hear from God for myself. Amen. Amen. Well, that's great. So we're coming down to an end. And so, Barry, I just feel like uh, there's some people out there that were really encouraged today. Would you mind praying for Amen. them? Amen. I hope, I hope so. Praise yes. the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. And I pray that all of us would have this insatiable desire to know in whom we have believed. Yes. We want to know you. We want to hear your word. We want to live by your word daily. We want to be uh, inspired. We want our spirit to be touched. We want your spirit to bear witness with our spirit. Father, we want this relationship because that is the only way we can live by faith. We can't live by doctrinal principles. We have to live by hearing your voice. We have to walk in the reality of, of your nature, of your purposes, of your promises for our lives, that they not just be things we've learned, but they would be the reality of what the Spirit has spoken to us through your word and through our time of, of fellowship with you. Hallelujah. I, I pray for those listening, especially for those that might be suffering some physical affliction. Father, we just speak your healing word right now. That, that you sent your word and healed them, and by your stripes they are healed. And we receive that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I know some of you guys, you have been quickened in your faith today. I would encourage you to give our prayer ministers a call and share a testimony of what's happened in your heart today. And I know there's some of you watching as well. I feel like you're, you're, you've, you've heard a word from God and it quickened that faith that Barry was talking about today but you're allowing the enemy to talk you out of it. And that is a lie. And so I know just be encouraged. Give our prayer ministers a call, 719-635-1111. They can agree with you on whatever you may be going through. Make sure and tune in on Monday at 10 a.m. for live Bible study once again. And Barry, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Good message. And uh, I look forward to hearing more from you. You probably will. Okay, good, good. And you guys have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, Barry. Thank you, you too. And we'll see y'all on Monday. Bye. 
on October the 4th through the 8th at our facilities in Karis Bible College, Woodland Park, Colorado, we're going to have our 2021 Ministers Conference. And I tell you, this is for people that are in full-time ministry. You have special needs. We are going to be ministering specifically to you. And it's just going to be an awesome time. We've got our regular speakers, myself, Bob Nichols, Bob Yandian, Carrie Pickett, Greg Moore, Dwayne Sheriff. And this year, our guest is Jesse Duplantis. And so I encourage you to make plans to join us. It's going to be a great time at our Karis facilities, Woodland Park, Colorado, October the 4th through the 8th, our 2021 Minister's Conference.